On June 23rd, we will see bantamweight Vladimir Kazbikov enter the BTC cage for the third time. With two exciting victories under the BTC banner already, expect another fight of the night performance come June. Hailing from North Ossetia, Alania, in the Caucasus region of Russia, Vlad grew up with a strong striking and wrestling background. At 15, he moved to Canada, where he continued to develop his skills. Two years ago, he found his permanent home at Parabellum MMA in Oakville, Ontario. When I was born, part of Russia is just you fight all the fucking time. And like on the streets, it's, it's fights all the time. There's nothing can be rougher inside of the cage because I kind of been through all of that already and um, that's what gives me the edge. Yeah. There are people that fight because the, they think they want to fight. Uh, there are people that fight because it's something to do and there's people that fight because it's what they are. And I feel like with Vlad, being a fighter is something that he is deeply uh, in, in his soul. So I started the first sport, it was Ushu Sanda, like Sanda, it's like a little bit similar to Samba. So I started that not because I wanted to compete or anything, just so I could fight better on the streets, because the fights just can happen literally, I can fight two times a day. Then I did wrestling because tra it's a tradition to do wrestling in that part of Russia, because we have like probably like five Olympic champions in just one city. And then moved here and then I guess took it serious. Strong cardio is great. Everything, everything is great. So only one thing I have to worry about is the weight cut. And you know what? I never failed to make weight, and I'm, uh, I'm not, gonna, not, not gonna fail now. First BTC fight, I was fighting the brown belt in jiu-jitsu, and people like uh, a similar interview. They asked me what am I gonna, what's my game plan, and I said he's great at the, at the ground. I'm gonna fight him on the ground. And people thought like, oh, fuck it, some sort of strategy, lying and, you know, misleading. No, I fucking took him on the ground and it was a 30-25 decision. Uh, pure pure on, a, on the ground, ground and pound thing. So I'm going to do the same to him because uh, he has a bunch of submissions. He's admitted to one of the guys I know. He's the best on the ground. I'm going to fight him on the ground. I respect you. Before and after the fight, I'm not gonna respect you in the fight. I'm not gonna respect you in the wins as well. Do not fail to make weight because I know you will. Do not fucking fail to make weight because it's the fight will fucking start before the fight actually starts. Your winner by unanimous decision. coach, that, that's an exciting type of person to, to, to work with. You are, to your core, uh, about this about this sport. Uh, and giving him the tools and getting him to to be technical is kind of the focus of our, of our job, instead of having him just go out and win this fight or just scrap this out. Um, but again, it is that is the type of problem I am eager to have as a, as a coach, as opposed to dealing with people that aren't fighters and that are maybe being dishonest with themselves. The advantage of people from where I'm from and from similar rough, rough neighborhoods are is the spirit. It's, it's that's what showcased and got me the win in my last fight because uh, I had food poisoning, if you know. And uh, I got in there, but literally there was no there was no energy in me because I puked like 40 times before the fight, and uh, I won with my spirit something that's been, been inside me, there's no losing in me. I don't think it's gonna go to decision. I don't think it's gonna go to decision this time because I feel fucking great. I feel, uh, I found, found my rhythm, everything's crisp, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna do a decision anymore. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be finished. Yeah. <laughs>